Hi everyone, welcome. We're going to be checking in on my so-called odd couple pair of worm bins. So yeah, everything out here are worm bins, and everything off to the right is the newest stuff. And as we make our way to the left, that's where we come to the oldest of my stuff. One of the odd couple bins is in fact at this point my oldest system, giving it that coveted position top left. But the system that it's paired up with, the one that's 60 days younger, is the one that's right here and that's the main reason that's the only reason we gave it that weird name odd couple because of the the big gap in their um their start dates 60 days apart so really quick before we get them up on the bench to get working on them just a couple bits and as far as their age 340 days on the older system 280 over here on the younger of the two um and today we're going to be giving them a kind of a meager little feeding but those feedings are going to go in as feedings number 30 and number 24. So I'm going to put a glove on, get those systems up on the bench, and we're going to get to work. The stuff that you see in this jar is pretty much going to be their feeding. It's my worm chow. And this particular batch is very heavily um, focused on pumpkin seed. So pumpkin seed is one of the main ingredients in there. So now, the other thing I wanted to do really quick was just you know, it's so counterintuitive because it's going against the whole idea of us having paper top um, coverings here and stuff like that is we want, we've been wanting to see the material in these systems dry to make the material in there much more crumbly and easier to manage perhaps if you were going to be sifting it, running it through a screen. But um, this little guy right here and this one right here too caught my eye and it just seemed to me like if I were to bring out my Mosquito Dunks BTI solution, it might be um, a good time to possibly nip anything that could potentially start growing in here in the bud and just introduce some of this stuff just in case the flying insects are thinking about moving back in. So these couple that I'm spotting out here I don't know, kind of makes me wonder if they're possibly living in the flutes of the cardboard. I don't know, I only saw a couple, but I've been seeing a couple here and there for a number of days now. So I just figured, try to play it more safe and um, precautionary, just in case there is the potential for a little bit of a flying insect outbreak. The other thing I did was I just walked around and every other one of my active systems in the wormery just got a shot of this stuff too, sort of like what we're doing right now. The stuff we gave them last time, interesting how, I wonder if maybe it's got something to do with the two different cardboard coverings. The cardboard covering that was um, removed from here, just really quick, in case you didn't notice it, and it's kind of easy to miss it, but there is two layers of cardboard connected to one another. The other one is just a single layer of cardboard. And I wonder if that in itself is providing a little bit more protection from evaporation because I see far fewer leftovers over here than I see over here. Over here I see a little bit of the um, a little bit of the leaves of radish that we left for them out here on the surface. Even a little bit of this chunk of uh, feeding zone indicator piece of coffee filter that that little piece of coffee filter that was nested within the leaves of the radish was meant to just be sort of like almost like a, a complement to the food but here um, hardly any of any of it um, has gone anywhere and there was this weird leaf in here too that we included it somehow got into the frozen the frozen leaves of radish but I don't know what kind of leaf that is I think I'm gonna pull it out so either way I, I do feel like um, we're probably starting to see some effects of the cardboard being more porous material cardboard and paper coverings to allow this stuff to dry to the point where it becomes nice and crumbly so I think it was 24 days ago not, not during the last check-in 12 days ago but rather the previous check-in to that which was again 12 day interval between check-ins so I uh, do suspect that we're at some point soon gonna be able to bring these systems to an end 
It's just that when the material still clumps together into these little balls like this, you know, sometimes it is really just a, a leftover chunk of food of some sort that's um, at the heart of most of these little clumps, you know. Some of them break apart into actual castings, like that one right there. This one here also appears, somehow it felt like it might have had a little um, core of some sort of material. That to me actually felt like a, a chunk of yet uneaten coffee. So all kinds of little bits and pieces of stuff in here. Whether it's food, whether it's actually finished castings, kind of clumping together. Some of it's not even a clump, but rather some sort of a larger little object in the middle that's just become covered in castings. So that's one of the reasons some people like to screen their castings to get all kinds of stuff like that out. Um, any sort of residual bits of slower composting materials that just didn't really make it through the breakdown process. Everything that does go through the screen though is going to be some really nice fine stuff. All these chunks of like, you know, the shell of a avocado or something like that. That stuff could all just be easily removed using a screen. So I just do feel like I want to try to help break little chunks apart that are still sort of holding together. I mean, ones that are really puny, I'm not bothering with, but ones that are, seem a little bit bigger, I am just sort of taking that extra time to help things declump a little bit. And this little patch of leftover materials, I think, like we did last time too, I think what we can do is. Um, just get that stuff submerged below the surface somewhere within the material so that worms can just much more easily get at this stuff and do away with it rather than it remaining you know kind of lingering as leftovers I believe down in the bed it's it's gonna stand a little bit of a better chance only because because of the coverings we've opted to go with ones that are allowing for the entire system to kick off some of its moisture content definitely sends the top surface into a much drier state than um, than if you got better coverings here here in the um, younger of the two systems it definitely um, does seem like we've got much better protection from evaporation because the material in here is quite a bit uh, cooler and moist much more moist feeling it does seem to me like there's worms all over the place. Even the material near the surface seems um, pretty nice and damp too. Here and there, stuff that I can see us possibly wanting to exclude by uh, by running it through the screen. I mean, I've got different methods that I use for separating the worms from their castings when I think the time has come to try to collect up and harvest their castings and move the worms themselves into um, a new place. Sometimes I'll migrate the worms which really means I'll just sort of empty out one edge of the bin and then set up some nice fresh bedding and food for them to be sort of attracted to or perhaps even if it's not attracting them at least if they do end up there they're inclined to stay sort of um, provided an environment that's really comfortable relative to what they had been out in the rest of the system. Other times when the material allows for it, when it's crumbly enough and loose enough, I'll just run the entire batch through my screen and then stuff that gets caught are leftover chunks of um, corn cob or sticks or stems or shells of avocado or any other little debris that doesn't really fall through the screen and the other thing that gets caught up with a lot of that large chunk material is the worms themselves so you'll end up with some really nice castings you'll have um, some worms that will have fallen through the screen and they'll be in the castings too which you can try to bait out or you can just treat them as the ones that get to roam free and be released with the castings when the castings are put to use perhaps out in the garden <laughs> or something um, but um, yeah I think that's probably the way we're gonna do it 
this time is to just screen the material but this stuff right here doesn't feel like it's gonna go like it's not quite loose and crumbly enough this stuff over here feels a lot much more likely to for the most part go through the screen I'm wondering if at this point perhaps just swapping those cardboards one for the other might work and then we'll put the thinner one over onto the younger one where it'll allow for um, a good bit more drying I don't know about good bit more but more for sure I could tell just from the way the surface fed food from last time looked in one bin compared to the other bin and I thought about bringing some coffee down too but I think this will be fine you might have noticed when I was removing the the paper coverings these right here were our feeding zone indicators <laughs> kind of a tradition to put them in and then there was the um there was the oddball leaf that I removed from here so I'm thinking that that's probably going to stay out at this point I thought I just had it in my hand a moment ago did it somehow slip in to the system I don't know it doesn't matter maybe it fell off the table I'll find it later but it just seemed to me like a leaf that wasn't really um, making much progress so over here too we've got coffee filter going to serve as our feeding zone indicator and then over here we're going to put the single ply piece of cardboard and it's also a little bit narrower this one is actually wide so wide that it, it's meant to um, fit into this somewhat wider container this makes me wonder if what we're going to end up with here is something a little bit unusual it's thicker over here where we don't need as much protection but it's also kind of propped up by the um, the turned up edge of the paper that goes around so there's a good bit of airflow below it almost like it's providing no protection at all <laughs> so this stuff is just going to continue to dry this way if we leave it as such I don't know um, I'll have to play with this perhaps I'll come up with some sort of a different covering here maybe I'll just leave it I don't know whatever <laughs> that's it for the video everyone hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.